Hi, I'm Diane Dayton. We're at the 23rd annual Boscovsburg's Jazz Fest in Reading, Pennsylvania. Catching up with incredible bass player and now radio star. Oh, yeah. Brian Broberg. Huge. <laughs> Huge radio star. Yes, you are. K. Brian. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, bass on the broadband's doing well. It's coming up about on a year anniversary. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. A um, couple years ago, I have a lot of friends in radio. I've done some guest hosting, things like that, and uh, I have a lot of friends in radio. One of them is Carol Hanley. She was the program director for KWJZ in Seattle, which is a huge jazz station up there. And as things go in this business, they flip formats, and she found herself out of a job. Um, she's working now, which is cool. But she started her own radio station, and we've been, we were really good friends. And, and I watched her develop a station from, from nothing, an internet radio station, and smoothjazz.com and you know, Sandy, they're, they're good friends of mine, and I've watched their success. And one day I just was looking around, and, and I just wanted to look in the internet and see if there's anything for bass players, and there was no radio that supported bass players. And I was like, nah, this can't be, this can't be right. So I kept doing more searching and more searching, and there was not one radio station, and no, not one internet radio station anywhere in the world that supported bass players. Mm -hmm. So... While I'm searching for it, the name popped into my head based on the broadband. And here we are almost a year later. And let me see, we checked the stats in February. We had listeners from 75 countries. Wow. And it's based on the broadband.com. It's, it's amazing. It, it sounds like a real radio station, which kind of freaks me out. It's like, I don't know what I'm doing. But I had great help. So um, we play a mixture of all the legends and all the guys that will never get a record deal and never get on the radio. So people send me CDs from all over the world. And uh, it's a really interesting blend of music. It, nothing sounds the same. We're not a singles format. We don't do top 20. So our playlist is thousands of songs. So you, you really hear a lot of variety of music. You hear a lot of acoustic bass, a lot of electric bass, and a lot of people you've never heard of before. And it's just it's a really enjoyable listen because it's always taking you someplace that you don't expect. It's not the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah. And it... it um, it sounds better than I thought it would. At first, I was just like, oh, God, it's going to sound like, you know, nothing but just, you know, whack it, whack it, whack it. You know, just bass solo after bass solo after bass solo. It's not like that at all. It's a really enjoyable listen, and a lot of our listeners aren't even bass players. And that's what's cool, because they like the diversity of the music. So I'm very excited about it. It's, it's neat to watch it grow. I know I do. I love tuning in. It's cool. And it always makes me smile when I hear you come on. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, you know, and well, we, we were talking, I, I fell and broke my back in October, mm -hmm. and... I don't recommend that to anybody out there. Don't break your back. Um, I couldn't play for three months. I couldn't do much of anything, and it was a perfect time for me to put my energy into the radio station because I really couldn't do anything. So I started doing my radio show, and uh, I'm a DJ on the show yes. from 10 to 2 Pacific, you know, uh, five, five days a week, and it's, it's really fun. I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. It's fun to talk about the music and, and, and the players, and it uh, keeps me... Keeps me it gives me something to do while I'm recuperating. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was the timing was perfect. I, it would have been a drag. I mean, I mean, it was a drag that I had to break my back to do that, but the timing was perfect to put into the radio station since I couldn't play. I was right. still doing something about the music, and that was cool. I love some of the things that you do with the station, too, that you give the songs that were played before or after mm -hmm. reflection, because sometimes it's like, oh, what was this? Right. And you can go check it out. I think that's great. Yeah. And I also love the fact that you get all these station IDs from people yeah. and listeners around the world. Well, you know, it, it dawned on me that especially since this format and the station is truly about the instrument, it's about supporting the bass community, I wanted our listeners to feel like they're actually part of the station, not just tuning in and listening. So I, I have listeners submit their own station IDs to get them involved so they hear their voice on the radio. And it's really cool because we're getting IDs from all over the world and you hear all these cool accents and stuff like that. And it's great because people are listening from all over the world and it makes them feel like they're... I, I want it to be more like a part of a community, not just, oh, it's a cool radio station. I want them to feel like they're actually a part of it. Mm -hmm. We've got some really amazing plans coming up with the player and... Um, Education, video, communication, real-time, instantaneous, worldwide communication. Listeners will be able to communicate to each other instantaneously worldwide. Mm -hmm. There's some really cool technology that we're going to be launching this summer that I'm really excited about because now it's a, it's a global community, but people are going to be able to interact and talk with each other while they're listening to the music, and there will also be video involved. So if somebody does a performance or a workshop or something like that, you could be sitting in you know, Pennsylvania, and somebody could be sitting in Indonesia watching the same clinic and watching the same workshop and communicating to the artist at the same time. So oh, it's really cool to blend all the, all the technology in supporting the community at the same time. It's very exciting. That is very exciting. Yeah, it's neat. Brian, you certainly have found your niche. You're bringing it together. I commend you. you. That's excellent. Well, especially, you know, the music business has changed so much 
the days of doing one thing and surviving is kind of over. I think almost for everybody in society, just because of the economy and everything. So, it, this is ways of still. This is a way of still being involved in music, which I love. Education, which I love. The future of the music, the future of the instrument, which obviously I'm passionate about. So you find different ways to bring it all together uh, into one thing, which is whatever entity that is. But it's just it's it's wonderful to play a part of all these different pieces because the end result is still the same thing. It's about supporting the music and the creation of the music, and that to me is what it's about. Well, speaking of music, you've got three CDs out that couldn't be more diverse. Right? Yeah, <laughs> tell us about. I guess those. it's like me, diverse. <laughs> That's right. Um, I had a really amazing opportunity this past year that that probably happens once in an artist's life in, in their career, especially with where the music business is at. Um, I did a couple records for Japan that I owned the rights to for America and the rest of the world. And I also did a brand new record for the United States called Compared to That, which is my new jazz record. But I had the uh, masters for a, a CD that I did called In the Spirit of Jobim, which is a Antonio Carlos Jobim tribute, which is partly, actually more my tunes than his tunes, but, but my tunes that are in the Brazilian Jobim vibe and some Br Jobim classics with full orchestra, mm -hmm. which we're going to do at the Miller Center, which I can't wait. I'm flipping out. Um, and uh, a Jimi Hendrix tribute, which is weird for a bass player doing a Jimi Hendrix record, but two different record company executives, two years apart, from two different countries and cultures, both said to me, you should do a Jimi Hendrix record. And when the first guy said it, I'm like, yeah, come on, you know. When the second guy said it, it was like, well, maybe they hear something that I'm not getting, or maybe I should look at this, because if these two people, one from Japan and one from the United States, are thinking the same thing, then maybe I really need to look at this and take it more seriously. So I did, and ended up doing Bromberg Plays Hendrix, which is a Jimi Hendrix, you know, tribute mm -hmm. to Jimi's tunes done my way, and it was stupidly fun. I mean, I, I was always been a huge Hendrix fan. I mean, mm -hmm. always. Um, but it was really fun to make this record, and it's completely polar opposite from compared to that, my jazz record, and in the spirit of Joe Beam. It's just shredding, rock and roll, mm -hmm. fusion-y guitar. It, it's all piccolo bass, but it sounds like guitar. And the incredible Vinnie Caliuta on drums. There's just two of us. There's just two musicians on the whole CD, but it sounds like a band. That was really fun. But yeah, it's, you've got this shredding rock fusion record, this beautiful Brazilian nylon string mm -hmm. guitar sounding record, and orchestra, and then the jazz record with a horn section. There are three completely different types of records that came out within a few months, and that was like an opportunity. I may never get this again in my career. I want to take advantage of it was really cool to put those three projects out. So all three of you were happy. Right? All three of me, yes. Me, <laughs> myself, and I. Yes, yes, there you go. Pick a low bass. I love what you do. Tell me more with, about that. You know, it, it's, a, it's a name that I think Stanley Clark was the first guy that I ever heard of to use the name. Probably nobody knew what to call it. It's just a bass. It's a bass. Physically, it's a bass tuned to the register of a guitar. The string spacing is exactly the same. The neck is the same, at least on my instruments. It's the same thing as playing a bass, except I tune it an octave and a fourth above a bass. So it's truly the same register as a guitar. So it kind of sounds like a guitar. To the untrained ear, which is 99% of us, mm -hmm. it sounds like a guitar, but it's actually a piccolo bass. So I, I play it like a bass. Everything's in the same position as a bass. But it allows you to think differently because you're now playing the melodies, you're singing more, you're communicating more, versus where the, the, the role of bass in music, in any music, I don't care if it's country, jazz, rock, classical, it doesn't matter, it's all the same. Bass is a supportive instrument. Bass, we are the foundation. You can build the tallest building in the world, but you gotta have the foundation for it. That's what the bass player does, is the rhythmic foundation and the harmonic foundation. When you put these different strings on it and approach it differently, now you don't assume that role anymore. Now you assume the role of the building versus the foundation for the building. So now I assume the role of what a guitar player would do or a horn player, what, what they would do. So it forces you to play differently and to think differently and to hear differently, even though your fingers still go where you know where the notes are. How you play it, your role is different. I'm not playing the groove in the background anymore. I'm playing the melodies on top and it's, really fun and very challenging and it's been a huge part of my life it just kind of happened organically and it's become a very strong voice of mine meaning I had no idea that I had that kind of melody in me mm. I didn't know I could write music I didn't know I could sing like that it wasn't until I started playing that instrument where it's like wow there's a part of me that I didn't realize I had as a bass player so it was very fun to develop that and now it's become a really huge voice of mine, yeah. which I, I, people don't know what to do with me. They don't know if I'm a bass player or a guitar player. It's kind of probably hurt my career in a way, but it, it doesn't matter. For me, it's rewarding musically as I get to do things that most bass players wouldn't normally think about. And for me, that's very exciting to put me in a place where I have to rise 
to the occasion, mm -hmm. like to, you know, like the concerts this weekend with Chuck and the orchestra. You know, I'm going to be on stage playing with one of the greatest guitar players in the world with a bass that sounds like a guitar. Uh -huh. Like, what the heck am I going to do after playing next to him? <laughs> it forces you to rise to the occasion of trying to play music on an instrument that's kind of not the way it's supposed to be designed, yeah. but it's about the music, and that's what I yeah. love about it. Well, I love to watch you play, and I always love catching up with you because okay. you're always up to so many interesting things. Uh, that's right. <laughs> that's why this is white. That's why that's I'm right. only 23. Only okay. 23. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking My time pleasure. once again. Always Ryan. great to talk to you. <laughs> you too. Thanks. We're coming to you from the 23rd Annual Boss Cosberg's Jazz Fest in Reading, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Sugar sweet and so is she. Bye.